Hey guys, I thought I'd show you how to make a a, uh, a Dyneema lifeline. So we got to do a couple things. You have to make an eye splice. This is going to attach to the um, pelican hook here. And then we have to make another eye splice um, around a thimble, which is going to lash to the bow pop up. So, I already have some marks laid out um, for the appropriate length of the... Um, the first splice, so I'm just going to go ahead and mark my mark my rope. You'll have to lay those out yourselves, whatever the appropriate length is. So, as you can see, I just have a couple of marks here. So this is three sixteenths line, and I'm going to use a. 5 sixteenths um, fid and I'm going to shove it through the first mark kind of at an upward angle so that the idea is that the line com comes through like this instead of straight through you want the line to come through at an angle and then I'll use a larger fid to push the first one through and I've made myself a nice hole to stick the end of my line through. So I'm going to bring this down until the mark you see here is inside the fit, inside there. So that's the length of my loop. That's what the two lines you made earlier just determines the length of your loop. So now I'm going to, this is called a Bremel, so it just means it's a lock and I'm going to skip a couple of what's called pixels here so each little pair of or each little V that's made is a pixel so I'm just going to skip a couple and stick this back through again at an angle okay and again I'm going to push the larger fit through with the original fit just like that leaves a nice big hole in the line and you just go all the way to the end. And you feed the entire line through that tail. So now as it closes up, you can see it's locked in place. There's no way for that to come undone. So now that's all that's left to do is feed the tail again and inside the core. And that's where you get the, uh, that's how you, it's called burying it. So I've come up with kind of a, a, um, a faster way of doing this using a, I, I found that using the standard FID it's really tight and you can't push it through very well and it causes me a lot of grief. So I found that if I use the puller, which is this tool here, right, it lets you pull, pull strings through and I pre-taper uh, this. So we're going to taper it down. And how I taper is um, I just mark off, you know, this is where it's going to bury in. Okay, so this part's going to bury in the crater. You want to make sure it's buried before you start tapering. So I'm going to give it like a nice thumb width, and I just mark a line on here. And then I skip every other, every other, uh, as you can see, oh, maybe you can't see, as you, every other um, rope when I make a mark. So they're kind of around. One, two, three, four, five. There's 12 strands in here. Six, seven, eight, nine, uh, I mark 13 and cut it on 13.
Okay, so now I go back to my first mark and I pull out one thread and cut it. I just keep going that, like that all the way down the rope. So pull it out a little bit, cut it, and then pull the piece out of the tail. And what this does is it thins up the tail. And so that's what gives you the nice taper on your finished product. Doing this on the boat. It's a lovely day down here in San Diego. It's really hot, which is nice. And uh, wrapping up this project down here. I guess after I'm done, I'll officially know how long it takes me to do one of these. Let's see, 6 minutes, 32 seconds so far. I've started to do quite a few of these. With the uh, rope rigging on the boat, everything uh, needs to be spliced one way or another. So you get pretty proficient. Okay, so now you can see that I have cut out the lines and it comes down to one final strand, nice and tapered. And what's nice about this method is it makes the pulling method easier because these, what happens is all you have is these little nubs sticking out of the braid until the very end. So now this core here, this is going to get shoved inside of the core. So what I like to do is kind of pre-open the core just sort of push it open and see how it looks, expands like that. Now this will shrink roughly to that size because the line will be inside of it. It's an important consideration when you're doing your measuring. Okay, so I want to make sure when it's like sort of that there's enough space for all of that um, material inside. So I'm going to go just a little bit past it. And then I'm going to stick my uh, puller inside the core like such you get the important thing here is to make sure you don't catch that you go through the center of everything you don't accidentally catch uh, here. and again I'm going to come out just about I don't know, roughly one pixel or two pixels um, before the uh, splice. So now this is really simple. You can just feed in these pieces, these lines. I feed in about five or six of them, fold it back over, and then you know what you're gonna do is try and pull it through there. So I like to jam a fit in there just to just to open it up a little bit beforehand. This seems to uh, make the process easier and so now that's what it looks like and it just sucks right through nice and painless and then it pulls out this end okay so now you have your pieces there and it looks like this so now you just milk it back which means to pull it back and voila it's sucked in so one final step I like to do is uh, take it to the winch I have a jig set up back here where I can attach it so I attach it to the boat. you do this is that it sets the knot. This stuff stretches a little bit so you want to 
pre-stretch it before you do all your measuring. Alright. And that's hard as a rock. Nice and smooth. So now that, that knot is set totally. And there you have it. A nice Bramble splice. So this will go around my uh, pelican hook, feed it through, over, and then suck it back down. So that's how I'm going to attach to the pelican hook, just like that. Alright, thanks a lot.